Yo, what's going on guys, Arax here, and welcome back to another Monster Hunter Cross or Monster Hunter Generations video and another episode of the Weapon Workshop. Last week we wrapped up the melee weapons with the gun lance and if you missed that or any of the other melee weapons you can find a link to the playlist in the description box down below. But in today's video we're kicking things off with the bow which is probably the most melee friendly of the ranged weapons. If you're a melee hunter looking to branch into the ranged world then this is the best place to start. As always, we're going to kick things off in guild style, as this will be most familiar to those of you coming over from Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. The main obvious difference from the outset being your ability to equip two hunting arts, however the differences don't end there. See, Bo has had some pretty significant changes since 4 Ultimate, so let's start by talking about those quickly before we dive into the moves. First of all, if you use Bo in 4 Ultimate, then you'll likely be familiar with the fact that a bow was either capable of doing a power shot or an arc shot, but not both. There were different types of arc shots and we'll get to that shortly, but in short, you had to pick a bow depending on what you wanted. Well, in Monster Hunter Generations, that's changed. See, every single bow is now capable of doing both a power shot and an arc shot, at least in guild style. You will still need to pick your bows carefully depending on what type of arc shot you want as well as what types of special shot and coatings you want too, but regardless, every bow now has the potential to do both power and arc shots. Now as for the weapon itself, bow, unlike bow guns, has infinite ammo or infinite arrows to be precise. You have an array of coatings available to you which you can use to power up your shots or apply status effects and as mentioned, a series of special shots which you can check in your details page in the menu. It's also worth noting that there are different control types for the bow and while type 2 is selected by default, I'll be going over controls in type 1. Type 1 is more in line with all the other weapons in that X is your primary button for attacks whereas Type 2 is more like a shooter where R is used to shoot. But for continuity purposes among the other weapons, let's work with Type 1. So with that out of the way, now let's actually take a look at the moves. First of all, with your weapon sheath, pressing forward and X will draw your bow and instantly fire an arrow. Alternatively, you can hold down X to charge that shot and fire off a level 2 or 3 version depending on what you're aiming for. And similarly, with your weapon drawn, pressing and or holding X will also fire and charge your shots respectively. There's a bit more to talk about with regards to charged shots, but let me just go over the rest of the moves first and then we'll double back. You could also move around whilst charging your shot or while you have stamina, but the second you run out, you will fire the arrow instantly. Pressing A will perform a quick swipe with your arrow, and if you press A a second time, you will follow that up with a second hit. It does do cutting damage, but you're not really going to be using this that often unless you're trying to get rid of, say, a tiny monster in front of you. Pressing B will then perform a back hop. However, something new to Monster Hunter Generations if you press B a second time, it'll then follow that first back hop with a backwards roll, which actually puts you back the same distance as about three back hops, so it's good for dodging an attack or repositioning yourself if you need distance for a shot. And what's more, if you tap or hold X straight after the backwards roll, you will instantly go into a level three charge. Now, if you hold down R, it'll bring up this aiming line here, which can be used to help you work out where your shots are going. Ideally, once you get to know the weapon and you know your distances, you want to be blind firing a lot of the time instead of using this, but if you're starting out, it might help you out a little bit. That being said, if you are aiming for, say, a monster's head, then you might still want to use this too. It can also be used to show you where the arc shots will land, but we'll get to that in just a second. Holding down L and pressing X or B will cycle between your available coatings. Note that not all bows can use all coatings, so if there's a particular one you're after, then be sure to check that your bow supports it beforehand. And then once you've selected the coating you want to use, pressing X and A together will apply it to your weapon. And while the bow does have infinite ammo, coatings are of course limited. Coatings come in a number of different forms, from power all the way to status effects. A power coating is your bread and butter and is something you should always aim to use, but status coatings are great for putting, say, monsters to sleep or paralyzing them, poison, etc. However, I'm not going to go over coatings in depth just now. If that's something you are interested in and you do want to see, then I'll likely do that once Generations launches in the West, so that way I can actually do it with English text. So for the time being, let's get back to the moves. If you hold down X to charge your shot and you then press A while you're charging, you will fire an arc shot. And the circle you saw on the ground earlier whilst holding R illustrates where the arc shot will land. The longer you charge the shot, the further the arc shot goes. So if you want it close, you need to do a quick charge, further away a long charge. Arc shots also come in three forms, focus, spread and blast, and these are bow specific. So while all bows can do power and arc shots, an individual bow can only do one of the three arc shots. A focus shot rains down shots in a concentrated area, this hits multiple times and is therefore good for both exhausting a monster and applying status effects. Similar to that is the spread shot, this also rains down shots but this time in a much wider area so it's great for using on larger monsters. And then finally you have blast shots, which are even better for KOing monsters. This fires a single explosive shot in a focused area, but this will also knock teammates flying if you're using it online. 
Now following on from here, we also have the power shots. Now due to the fact that bows have power and arc shots, power shots can only be performed after the shot. So if you press or hold X to fire a shot and you then follow that with an A input, you'll perform a power shot. Now the power shot is always one level higher than the shot you fired. So when you look at the shots that your bow has, if you fire a single uncharged level one shot, the power shot will be the next level up. Level two charge, the next level, etc. You'll ideally want to get into the habit of following a shot with a power shot as it has some great damage potential and is basically just another free quick shot. So it'd be silly not to, right? And aside from that, the only other move you need to worry about is the jump attack. Jumping off a ledge and pressing X plus A will perform a slash with your arrow. Again, not massively important unless you're looking to mount. However, on top of that, jumping off a ledge and pressing X will fire a single quick shot. And if you do it fast enough, you can put yourself back on the ledge without dropping down. So, those are the moves for the bow. Shoot, apply coatings, pop, and an arrow attack. Pretty simple. However, before we move on to the other styles, let's talk quickly about the charge shots. See, if you look at your equipment details and you scroll to the end, the last page tells you what coatings are supported, and this page here tells you your different shot types for your respective charge levels. Different bows have different shot types, and these can come in a variety of combinations. You could say have all of one, or one of each, or two of one and one of another, etc. The shot types are rapid, spread, pierce, and heavy, or destructive. This fourth heavy shot is new to Monster Hunter Generations. Rapid shots fire out a number of arrows in a straight line. The first arrow is the most powerful, with the following up ones doing less damage each time. But given the straight line is pretty accurate and good for hitting a specific spot on a monster. Now this shot here is designed to be used at medium distances. Spread shots on the other hand fire out arrows in a fan, or spread out. They cover a wider area, but they're not as effective when used at long ranges, so they're best used in close proximity to a monster. Pierce shots fire a single arrow that will actually pass through a monster, hitting it multiple times on the way through. So this is really useful on large monsters, especially if you can fire it, say, from the head right down through the body. But this is also a long range shot, so you want to be using this from much further away. And finally, the new shot, heavy shot. This fires a single heavy arrow that doesn't actually travel that far, but it's useful for breaking parts on a monster. So think of it like your part break shot. And given the distance it travels, this is a close range shot. Now, last but by no means least, just before we take a look at the other styles, why does distance matter? Well, see, the bow has what is known as critical distance. It's a distance where your shots are most effective. If you're outside critical distance, your shots are not doing as much damage, and as such, you're wasting time and resources. Different shot types require different distances, and the easiest way to measure a distance is in back hops. Close is typically about one back hop from a monster, medium is two, and long is about three. If you hit a monster at critical distance, your screen will shake, like this. And if you're too close or too far away, it remains stable, like this. So that is your indicator. It will take some time to get used to, but once you do get it, you'll be doing it all the time. Plus, a technique that you might see bow users doing online is this. If you're charging a shot and you want to maintain your distance, then people often spin around in circles like this whilst charging. So if you're going to use the bow, make sure you learn your distances. This is not a weapon where you just sit at the back of the map and you take pop shots. Now that we've covered all the basics and got guild style out of the way, let's turn our attention to striker style. With this style you can equip three hunting arts, and the bow has some pretty cool ways to mess around with, so we'll touch on those in a bit. But as for your basic moves, well there's not much you can really take away. I mean the bow has a button to shoot, hop and slash, so if you take that away there's not much left. But striker does come with its sacrifices, and this time it's in the form of the power shot. In striker style you have no power shots, so following a shot with an A input will do nothing. You do still have your arc shot though, so you can still press A whilst charging to do that shot. Aside from that, nothing else has changed. So three hunting arts, but no power shot. Next. Moving over to aerial style, once again you can only equip one hunting art, so choose wisely. As for changes from guild style, well aerial style loses both power shot and arc shot. However, you now have an array of aerial options to somewhat make up for it. If you jump off a monster, a teammate, a bomb, etc, and you press X, you will then fire a shot diagonally down and forward. If you press A however whilst jumping, you'll fire a shot directly down. But if you chain them together and you start with A, you can then fire a downward shot followed by the forward shot for two quick shots in succession. You can also press X plus A in the air to perform an arrow slash, but again, not massively useful compared to the other offerings. And as is often the case with aerial, while you might have lost something, you now have an alternative option that is quite easy to spam. A then X are two very quick shots that you can use to rack up a number of hits on a monster. Once again, Bushido or Adept can only equip one hunting art, so be mindful of your choice. On top of that, Bushido or Adept also loses the arc shot, but that arc shot now becomes a power shot, so it's much more like the power shot bows from Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. 
See if you press A whilst charging, you will cancel your primary shot and simply go straight into a power shot. But similarly, you can also follow up your first shot with an A input for the regular power shot too. The second way is the best way to use it, simply because you'll get two quick shots off, but if you're pushed for time or you only have an opening for one, then going straight into the power shot is an option. You also lose the back step on B, so pressing B will now make you roll forwards instead, and that also means no fancy new back roll either. What you do gain, however, is a super quick route to a level 3 charge after a Bushido or an Adept evade. Simply roll through a monster's attack to trigger the evade, and after doing that, if you press or hold X, you're straight into that level 3. You can also follow an evade with an A input if you wanted a quick arrow slash, but let's be honest, you're not going to do that. Now, with all of the styles out of the way, let's take a super quick look at the three weapon specific hunter arts for the bow. First up, you have Trinity Raven. This fires three arrows at once, two times in succession, and it then loads up another three charges before firing them off to dish out some pretty insane damage. Acceleration Rain, on the other hand, is a special shower shot that you fire into the air and it buffs you, giving you both increased movement speed and increased charge speed. So on the charging front, think of it like a free focus while the skill is active. And finally, you have Blade Wire. In this, you tie two arrows together and you shoot them as a single line, which deals cutting damage, and you can therefore use to slice off things like monster's tails. So to wrap things up, let's talk quickly about my favorite style. And for bow, it's gotta be either Guild or Bushido. Guild is great because out of the three weapon specific hunter arts, only two of them really stand out. That's Trinity Raven and Acceleration Rain. So Guild allows me to use both of those and all the other benefits. However, with that being said, dodging through a monster's attacks and having a level three charge ready to go is really nice. Especially if you're using a spread shot bow and typically fight at close to medium ranges, it then means that after your evades, you are almost always in the right position. But either way, they're all good in their own way. And ultimately it's down to you to decide what you like the most. And that's pretty much it. If you guys did enjoy the video, then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below, let me know what you think. And thanks for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.